stepped back from a tremendous rowing camp with Chinook. Leslie threw a, an, an incredible camp in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, just amazing amount of information and uh, lots of rowing, lots of uh, really good time on the water, lots of good time with friends, tons of technique and drills. And she opened up her house and had a wonderful dinner. Um, and she did great. She did some really nice things with dinner. And I was thinking how proud of her I was uh, making a perfectly appropriate athlete dinner. <laughs> it was great. It was yum. So here we go. This is about food prep. And I'm going to be talking about uh, just kind of some basic stuff that I'm also going to be addressing. And um, yeah, just kind of going over some of the food prep ideas that I do that help me um, when I'm getting ready for a race or if I'm getting ready for a show or uh, with my clients, just keeping everything fueled and uh, keeping us on track with our long-term sustainable food. It's funny how you get nervous when it's just you and them. <laughs> it's just you and you too. Very fun. Anyway, uh, public speaking. So, um, yeah, so with my clients, with my people, with my husband a little bit, and uh, he doesn't do all the things that I ask him to all the time, but he does like to try. He does that a lot of it. So, anyway, um, I like to try to come up with things that work, things that don't take forever in a day to, to do, to prep, and something I can stick with long-term. So it's all about that long-term, sustainable, healthy lifestyle. Doesn't mean anything has to be eliminated. Just try to keep the body so it's not inflamed. Okay, so uh, there are lots of foods that cause inflammation, so we try to keep those foods to a minimum or keep them out. In my case, I keep them out most of the time or <laughs> getting inflamed. Uh, sometimes I choose to add them when I want, like when I'm traveling, I mean, some of the foods that have my body. Um, and then I go back to uh, try to stick to my home food, my dream food, the food that makes me happy when I get home, but mindless. I don't have to think about it. So here we go. We have a whole bunch of different options. So the first thing we're going to talk about here, there we go. Wow, that's all my production. Um, and we're just going to kind of go through this. Hopefully the video won't cut out on me. <laughs> so you guys have any questions, put them down at the bottom. Comment section, give me a like. So for breakfast, I love eggs. There's so many things you can do with eggs. So we're going to be looking at eggs, hard boiled for the Philly camp that we're doing. Hard boiled, poached, fried, any of those types of things. You can also mix them with oats, or you can mix them with grains and oats and make a nice pancake, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, bacon can go with that. Yeah, yummy bacon. Sometimes my husband actually smokes the bacon. Oh, tremendous. Yes, bacon is a-okay. Um, so there's all kinds of different options for meat for breakfast. If you want to do meat for breakfast, or maybe just egg. So a turkey apple sausage is a good option. Um, I like to do fish for breakfast. <laughs> I know I love fish. Uh, there's all kinds of goodies. So that's just to give you an idea of where we can start there. I also do, um, I love collard greens. So kind of try something different than spinach. And these beautiful, big collard green leaves are so good for taco shells, for um, chopping them up real small. You can put them in with your eggs with a little bit of onion and some garlic, something like that. Even the zucchini, you can make a nice scramble with these. These are uh, extremely high in calcium, which is great. It's, you know, we're not getting a whole lot of dairy. And we shouldn't be after the age of 14. You really shouldn't be getting that much. The bones are formed, so we're just dark leafy greens. So change up your greens. Don't just have spinach all the time. Try some salad. Uh, back over here, we start with snacks. So if you're going to do yogurt, just do full fat yogurt. This is yummy. So yogurt that's low cal, low fat, you know, artificial sweetener, all that stuff, the processes of the crappy yogurt and the stuff that kind of the shortcut with calories, if you will, with yogurt, causes inflammation in your body and your gut specifically. So the recommendation is to get the full fat yogurt, less processing, and it tastes incredible. My husband loves the strawberry fruit and stuff. It is heaven, heaven, heaven. Um, some more snacks. We have perfect snacks. 
apple and almonds. Love those. That's a great airport snack right there. These two, and you can keep you can keep almonds in your bag for a while. I mean, I've kept them in there for <laughs> probably a month. Uh, you know, I keep these in the freezer because almonds can go rancid. Um, but uh, try to get the raw almonds. Uh, don't have to be organic because we've got a shell on the side outside. But these um, are the raw, unsalted, unroasted almonds with an apple. So. I like organic apples. Apples carry the most amount of pesticides and chemicals in the skin. So an organic apple is not going to be, um, it's not going to have as much of that that option, I mean that uh, potential. So wash your food. Um, but these two, these are kind of like my go-to like if the years I've been doing that. That's just for me. You can have any fruit. Orange, banana, uh, plum, pear, apple. Yeah, change it around. Don't do the same stuff all the time. Variety is like the life. So the these are a great snack option. A great snack option. Uh, I love these. Probably can't even tell what these are. <laughs> they look like like Flintstone chips. Well, they they are. There's these big, yummy, crunchy sweet potato chips, and they are heaven. There's nothing on these. There's no oil. There's no sugar. There's no maple syrup. There's no stevia. There's nothing. They are just pure yummy goodness. I love these. So I put these in the oven. I slice them thick like that. And <laughs> they sometimes my husband's like, "Are your fillings going to fall out?" <laughs> They're really crunchy, um, but very tasty. So uh, give that a shot. Uh, slice them this way. Um, I use. I have a V slicer that I use. Uh, this is one of the settings on it. But the one I use has just the flat, uh, the flat setting on it without the little. And it gets it really super thin. Put those on a cookie sheet, throw them in the oven through 350 or 300 for about 45 minutes and get the perfect chip with nothing added. Zero. And they're easy to make, super cheap, right? Make them on your own. Um, trail mix. So I make my own trail mix. Again, I started buying trail mix and everything had sugar added or oil. I'm like, why are we adding sugar and oil? These are, this is from. All the ingredients here are from Trader Joe's. The so raw almonds, actually the almonds are from Costco. Um, I've got uh, Montecito cherries, which are yummy, tart, sweet, um, unsweetened coconut, pumpkin seeds, there's a pumpkin seed, walnut, and uh, pistachios down in the bottom of the more. So uh, that's a perfect snack. The apricots are going to be next to you on there. And so but those are perfect as well. So there's no sugar added to these. No oil, they're just apricots. I don't know why we would need to add those things, but that's what most of these companies do. This I found today, it's sort of paleo friendly, whole 30 for me. And I'm liking it because it doesn't have any sugar, it doesn't have any, um, there's no story, there's no added junk. There's oil, but there's uh, sea salt, you know, good stuff, turmeric, bananas, yeah, I'm really, Coconut fat, apple cider vinegar, coconut amino. Yeah, this was a, a nice little surprise I found at the health food store. So I make a couple different flavors there. Then there is the stuff in the brown. What is that? <laughs> so these are my husband's snacks. He loves bars. I had a roommate, um, Jeanette, stayed with me in Arizona. She said, Do you think it's okay that I get a bar? Yeah, it's fine. Bars are fine. They're processed food. So they're not something that, that I eat. Because they are like sh candy from it. They're so sweet. They, uh, you know, a lot of them have sugar in them. So I try, actually, I stay away from this bag. That's why it's in this stanky bag right here. Because that's, that's my husband. <laughs> I'll find it. So um, that's his night. Uh, but anyway, but that is something totally doable for races. We can take those first thing in the morning. If you don't have time to do this thing, perfect. Those are perfect. Any of these options are perfect for race day treats. Um, any of these options are good for pre pre race treats. Okay, that's right. Uh, moving on, so the protein options for the regular long term sustainable prep. This is talking about stuff we're going to be doing, you know, for most of the year. Our dream foods I talked about. So uh, ground beef. I've got some cod, so I will prep both of those today. And I have them in large quantities. So I just cook them, um, make it for about four days of my food, and then Greg, um, I'll just cook his food separately. 
but I have four days of my food prepped, so I don't have to think. I just go into the fridge, grab and go. Uh, these are wonderful. They're, they're grain-free tortillas. And um, I started using these a couple of years ago, or actually, sorry, last summer. And then they started making some other flavors. And a whole bunch of my clients have been asking me, is it okay for these? Yeah, they're, they're gluten-free, they're grain-free. Um, and there's no reason that you need to be gluten-free or grain-free unless you're doing paleo or whole 30. But for inflammation, like I said, it's better to kind of stick to that. If you like grain, there's nothing wrong with some yummy homemade corn tortillas. I didn't have to do white corn, but um, yeah, these are, this is a great option. I stayed with Kristen in Arizona, and she had some wonderful corn tortillas that I didn't have any, but they made their own tortilla chips with it. They took some olive oil in a pan, and they made their own healthy tortilla chips, so I was pretty proud of them. They also made their own salsa. Speaking of salsa, homemade salsa, right? Heaven, heaven. It's one of the best dressings, I think, that you can add on your veggies if you're going to do that, or on your fish, or if you're going to, you know, you want to pair that with, um, hey, why not? Sweet potatoes. <laughs> so, anyway, salsa is a go-to. If it's homemade, even better. But you can, um, I would uh, put salsa on everything. I love salsa. Okay, where are we? Here we are. Fermented veggies. So, fermented stuff is great for the gut, right? It, it helps promote prebiotic and probiotic in the gut. I happen to find this today. Um, this is the Smoky Kale Organic Kraut. Again, look at the label, make sure no sugar. Sugar is going to inflame your gut, right? So we just read through all of this, these goodies and this has no sugar. has no additives either. No nitrates, no... Let's see, what else is in there? They sometimes they have carrageenan, all kinds of weird thickeners and stuff like you don't need thickeners in sauerkraut. I don't know why they added. So anyway, this looks really yummy. Mild smoky. Anything with chipotle grabs my eye. <laughs> I'm a smoky girl. I like the smoky stuff. So this is uh this is looking really good to me and they use um uh, well, natural smoke flavor. I didn't see that until now. Hmm. Anyway, may have to reconsider that one. <laughs> I love being honest with you guys. That one, I may have to take those back. Anyway, you never know when it says natural or whatever. So there's a little question mark. These, I thought I read that one before, but I did read this. This is tremendous. Very yummy. Spicy is going to be good, right? Increase the thermogenic effect of what your body's burning or keeps your body burning. Um, which is more efficient. So anything spicy is good. The more heat you can take on your food, the better. And this is looking really good. Peppers, green onions, sea salt, vegetable, sea, sea vegetable, and vinegar. So these sea vegetables, in other words, sea weed, I don't care. Yummy. Uh, good flavor. They make another one here. This is all from the house store. A little pricey, but it's worth it. And it lasts forever. Smoky health. Good. So... And that's where we're starting. These are kind of like toppings, right, that we would use for um, some, you know, sauteed veg if you want to do that or if you want to do like a little pasta, right? So this is my pasta. I love the cheese. <laughs> I do a uh, spiralized pasta. There's my spiralizer there. And it makes a little spaghetti. It makes little noodles, right? It's a dream. And for a shortcut, if I don't have time to set that up, the V-slicer, this is a staple. This is a staple. I will be bringing something like this to Philly for the class. So love this. You could do this every day. In fact, I do this every day. <laughs> I love, I love having my food pretend like it's pasta because I really uh, pasta hits my stomach and it just hits it like a rock. But this is so light and yummy and it has the same texture, same flavor as pasta, and I just love it. So anyway, this is a main staple zucchini, organic zucchini because the other zucchini is going to, you know, pull the chemicals into the skin and it leaches into the veg. So try to get organic there. Not everything needs to be organic, just some something. I usually say if it has a skin or a shell, uh, it's okay, but sometimes the skin is going to more just uh, Apple cider vinegar is key, right? Apple cider vinegar. Uh, great for your gut. The murkier, the better. So look for the apple cider. It doesn't have to be bragged. Um, I just had this one because I found it cheap at the <laughs> dollar store. But look for it to say 
with the mother, right? So the mother is the active enzyme, and it's all the stuff that makes the makes it murky that way. So the murkier, the better. Yeah, you want to have that sediment at the bottom, and that that you should be drinking throughout the day if you can tolerate it. Throw it in some water. Don't drink it plain when you first start off. After you've had it for a while, you can drink it plain. But throw it in some water. Um, you can add some cayenne pepper, or lemon, and uh, your stomach will thank you. Okay, we got onions, shallots are delicate and yummy, organic cabbage, mushrooms, yum, yeah, mushrooms to me are like meat. Um, I eat meat, I love meat, uh, sometimes I like to go without meat, so I, <laughs> I love mushrooms. Celery for, for crunchy, right, a little bit of sodium. These two both contain a little sodium, so if you're watching your sodium, just be careful of that. And as you know, tomatoes are high in sodium, most of you know. Let's see, lemon good for everything. Um, Jeanette Brimble, I stayed with her. She came up with a wonderful lemon ginger tea. She just sliced the ginger, she peeled it. I usually don't peel ginger, but she's she's clean as I <laughs> with the ginger. So she sliced it, uh, simmered the ginger for I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so, and added a couple slices of lemon. Heaven! It was the easiest thing ever. It was a really nice right before bed. It's just kind of calming on the belly. Um, I put ginger in everything, all my food. That's like my dream food contains ginger. <laughs> ginger and mustard. I love mustard. Um, so, um, you have bell peppers here, of course. Nice sweetness, crunchy. It's all about the things that make you happy. You know, I like crunchy. I like um, satiating, crunchy. I like a little bit of, you know, uh, sea salt. Sea salt, we're athletes, so we need to have that mineral from sea salt. Regular salt doesn't have a mineral. So so add sea salt to lunch and dinner. You don't have to be like crazy adding to everything, but yeah, you want to be able to replace some of the minerals that you have been taking out of sweating. So electrolyte replacement, coconut water, that's a good option. I'm just throwing a lot of ideas at you guys right now. Uh, coconut water is an option. Uh, here's my, oh, Kevin, I wish you guys could smell this. My husband makes me the most default. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, sprinkling the sea salt for lunch and dinner. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, replace the, the sodium. So if you use mustard, mustard's high in sodium. So don't use salt if you're doing that. If you use salsa, salsa's got a little you know, a little natural sodium just from the tomatoes, but it's not gonna it's not gonna put you over, it's not gonna cause a heart attack or whatever you want. So it's just fine. Uh so uh the point on that is if you're adding sea salt, don't add a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you're adding mustard, don't add a bunch of other stuff. So one or the other. Uh, apple cider vinegar can trick you that it's salt. So if you are watching your salt, it's uh, apple cider vinegar or any of these things. Um hot sauce any kind of hot sauce that'll kind of like take you out of that salt craving works great. This I just found, uh, I, again, I'm not into processed food, but, it, you know, sometimes you just got to have bread. <laughs> so anyway, this is an almond flour bread mix. I like it occasionally. Here, here's what I made, little dinner dinner rolls, and they're really good. They also have a little bread thing that I made, and it's all almond flour. I just pulled that out to give you guys an option for, you know, people who aren't doing grain, because grain isn't inflammatory. Um, you know, something you can you can try occasionally, uh, and it kind of does get me a little bit. It gets me satisfied with that. I gotta have bread, but it's it, for me it's occasional because it, it links me into wanting to eat that whole bag. <laughs> so anything that's processed for me is triggered. I'm like, I have okay. So uh, let's see shortcuts. So if you have a lot of tomatoes. You know, you bought some tomatoes in the market, you didn't use them. Either oven roast them. These are oven roasted, sun dried, or not sun dried, but oven roasted with no oil. And then I just freeze them. You know, I'll use these later in a saw barbecue, I mean, in a spaghetti sauce. Here's a great um, spaghetti sauce with basically nothing other than tomatoes and garlic and onion and yummy. But the flavor on this is so good. It's Trader Joe's. I like to make my own tomato sauce, but this one, uh, this is a really good cheater. <laughs> I call this a cheater. Uh, so I will add this to that. I'll add some mushrooms to it. And dun, 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 this is so good. Roasted garlic. So you always, it always seems like there's just too much garlic <laughs> in the house when you want to only need 
you only need a couple clothes. Well, my friends have, uh, they grow garlic, and I can never go through it fast enough. So I take it and put it in a cast iron pan, and I just roast it in olive oil. I mean, a generous amount of olive oil. And then I let it cool down, put it in the freezer, and now it's ready to go. So you can take this out, dice it up, put it in your tomato sauce with your sun-dried tomato. Bam! There you go. Nice little quick spaghetti sauce. So good. What else? Here's another idea for quick, you know, for, um, what am I saying? Oh, shortcut. So if you want to, uh, you have a bunch of tomatoes, you don't know what to do, puree them and freeze them. Again, this is like... A nice block of green tomatoes that I froze. Um, shortcuts for the for the food prep. So I'm not big on uh, buying veggies that aren't organic, but sometimes you just gotta cheat a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, these are super convenient for busy lifestyle, right? They're already they pick them at their peak, ready to go. They're frozen. But they are they were picked at their peak, so half the time there's way less handling than the fresh stuff that you get at the store. Same thing here, uh, rice cauliflower. I've been ricing my own cauliflower, and this is just so much easier, honestly. And it's two dollars for this whole bag. I mean, this is like a what is this? A twelve ounce bag. It's it's a, a decent portion. And uh, again, this tricks me into thinking it's rice, which is a grain. And it's inflammatory. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a, a trickery thing that we're doing to the mind. Okay, drink options. Yummy. So, um, sparkling water I love. Uh, it's hard to find the sparkling water that doesn't have, quote, unquote, natural flavoring. So this one has natural lime flavoring. Well, I'm in Idaho. We don't have, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, you know, it's really hard to find just plain. So, But for today, I wanted to show you guys that these are A-OK. -okay. Uh, this is a really nice tea house in Coeur d'Alene. It's a Gaiwan tea house, and they make um, they have incredible teas from India and China, and go figure that it's in Coeur d'Alene, because that's really funny that I thought. I was like, wow, Coeur d'Alene. So this is a nice uh, herbal tea, sleepy time. So I'll be, I usually partake in that right before dinner. I mean, before bed. And then uh, this is Heaven Steep. I'm a big loose leaf fan, and I found this in Philly with Cass's husband, Mike. He actually referred me to that. And this is the coconut black tea. So this is how I start my day with this stuff, and it's, I keep it in this container. This is a this is an airtight container. Let me open this for you guys. I only have one hand. Let me see if I flip this up. Let's try it. So this comes off. And it's, it's it's a suction, so if I try to close it, it wouldn't close. You have to push the button down and it sucks the air out. It's great. Keeps the tea super fresh. And then, no oh, heaven, I'm in heaven. That's the coconut black tea. It's so good, you guys. So good. I love that tea. So, uh, yeah, and it's all about freshness with that coconut. I know. She keeps sticking her nose in that thing. It's so good. It's like, wow, crack, crack tea. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can get these on Amazon. I love these little these little airtight containers. Uh, let's see. So we covered it. So I wanted to tell you guys, there's no such thing as good food or bad food or like. Well, I mean, you know, there are some foods <laughs> that you probably should stay away from. But there's no, you know, people are like, oh my god, it's bad for me. I, I shouldn't have eaten that. I had a piece of bread or I had some chips or I had some. Pot. Nothing's wrong with it. You can have whatever you want. You can have and I'm not talking about gaining weight, I'm talking about inflammatory, <laughs> okay? So inflammatory response is not about bloating. I mean, some of it is bloating, but inflammatory response can actually be causing, you know, other things in your body to happen like tumors or um, brain function, decreased brain function, skin issues, blood issues. So yeah, it's not just about gaining and losing weight. Uh, obviously, we're athletes. It's not. That's not what we're thinking about. We're just talking about long-term health, anti-inflammatory. So, you want in more information on that? You let me know. Uh, I base my my long-term sustainable food on Whole30. Look at it if you're interested. I'm totally available to talk to you guys about that. I know lots about um, other food 
programs that people do like keto or fasting, love intermittent fasting, love fasting. Big, big fan of the longest diet, the oldest diet in the world. Um, I know all about low carb, low fat. Don't do it. It's, it's useless. We don't, we need carbs and we need fat. So, uh, you know, low calorie, not really. That's not something we're interested in. We are athletes. We got to kill it. We got to be strong. We need glycogen in the muscle cells, right? In the muscle, glycogen. If that glycogen is not there as racers, uh, you're going to just tap out and, you know, we're not trying to like have to give you CPR on the side of the race course. So let's think about it. Let's be smart. Uh, yeah, we're going to be going over a lot of this stuff, but I wanted to give you an eye opener as to some of the things that are, um, yeah, just for my, just using me as an example, things that are important to me that are, that are, you know, long-term sustainable. And I've been able to keep that, uh, sustainability and I keep going back to it. So Getting back from Arizona, having a couple treats, like I had some chocolate almonds and you know, I blew up like I knew I would, but it was yummy. And then I'm like, I can't wait to get back to my food because it's home base. And um, you know, I'll get my Instapot out, I'll get my oven and my my um, wax paper and my foil and my V slicer and my, sh oh, we didn't talk about chef's knife. Gotta have a good chef's knife. Gotta have a good, <laughs> this right here, very important. I know it's like, oh, she's pointing the knife at the, but anyway, I, uh, Henkel makes great chef's knives. You've got, if you only have one knife in your kitchen, have a really good chef's knife that you can sharpen for a, for a lifetime. Okay. So that's a, <laughs> you go to an Airbnb. Yay. Kristen and Jeanette know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and there's never any knives and we can't travel with knives. It's so frustrating. Uh, so you just make do with a crappy steak knife or hopefully not a plastic knife. <laughs> But uh, really important to have good steak knife, have the tools that you like, cutting boards that you like, uh, cookie sheets. Yeah, cookie sheets are important for me. I stick everything in the oven. So when I cook all this stuff, mostly everything is either cooked in the oven. Um, I don't do any of the fancy, I'm going to steam my veggies and I'm going to stand over the barbecue for forever and cook my chicken breast till it's tender and 135. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it takes way too long. And the cleanup is a nightmare so pick something that works for you i love the oven like i said foil on a cookie sheet one that's done like if you're cooking chicken breasts or fish or whatever you're making vegetables the the foil just goes in the trash and it's easy and everything's done just telling you just saying all right well i look forward to seeing you guys and i hope this helps uh, i'm gonna be trying to do some more videos before camp. So I'm so jazzed for Philly. Yay. All right. We'll talk to you soon.